Hi, I'm Caroline Lane and I'm the team lead with NCBI's Children and Young Person Service. The purpose of this video is to share information about the development of early movement and independent travel skills of children and young people with sight loss. It is centred around the lived experiences of children, parents and young adults who will share their knowledge, skills and strategies. At the start, I remember we didn't really have major concerns um, when we got the diagnosis. Um, it was more kind of that, um, I said to my friend actually, a friend of mine actually, that um, I see him actually running with his brother. I don't see him and there isn't any restrictments or anything that he wouldn't be able to do. I saw him running and playing around. Our wish was that always that he was that he felt that he could explore everything and that he could check out everything and that there was no restrictions because that he wasn't able to see something that he could still do everything that everyone else could do. So young babies are motivated to move by what they see. However, babies who are blind or have low vision are very often delayed in developing these movement skills. Early intervention is linked to positive outcomes in later life, which is why building strength, muscle tone and spatial awareness skills from a young age ensures that children have the physical fitness, stamina and knowledge required to move about safely and ultimately prepare for and have control over their own travel needs. Um, so Christopher, as soon as he could start um, walking, um, he used echolocation, for example, so he would stamp on, with his feet on the ground and that gave him an echo that gave him um, a feedback from what's around him. Um, we would give him a cane very early, even when he was yeah not even walking. He I think he had a he had a cane, his first cane, just for him to get used to it and to um, that it's there basically. They don't see that he is blind because he's just playing and he's doing everything everyone else is doing. His brothers are doing. Mm. That's the way he, we wish for him as well. His whole life, that he's fully independent and knows he can do everything. I have very little depth perception. So I find it very hard to see slopes and steps and curbs. I use my vision as best as I can. Um, I wear dark clip-on lenses and a peaked cap when I'm outside. When I did the NCBI workshops, we learned a lot about being independent. We went to different places like the park and the bus station and we were taught like what kind of stuff to look out for and to go slow and to be careful. And we were also taught how to have the courage to ask someone, look, I can't see, can I grab your arm or can I link you? I would use my cane basically every single day. I wouldn't use it around the house, obviously, since that's a very familiar environment, family, everything like that. But if I was going out, again, going downtown, I would bring the cane with me. Every day in school, I would use the cane. So when I first started using my mobility aid, I was absolutely mortified. I hated the idea of standing out. I wanted nothing more than to blend in with the other students and look what I had perceived to be normal. And at first, I refused to use my cane at all. Then I had an accident in the school. And this sort of opened my eyes that as much as I wanted to be normal, like, like the other students, if I was having these accidents, I wouldn't feel normal. I'd be constantly hurt. This cane, this mobility aid was the thing that I needed to be on the same level as the other students. I had already had this preconceived idea of what was normal to me, what was different as well. So it felt wrong to start using the cane then. But if I was younger, if I was still forming this idea of what was normal, what was good in my mind, the cane would have been a lot easier to get used to. So the greatest change in my travel needs when I moved from secondary education to third level education was definitely the need for public transport. But over time I've become very confident and now I can say I'm so comfortable using any bus and so comfortable asking for assistance and asking for help. So the greatest challenge on campus and moving to campus is definitely becoming familiar with the campus. So in countering that challenge or in overcoming it, I began availing and engaging with mobility training. I found practice was the most important thing. I had to keep practicing the routes on campus the whole time, just keep practicing them until they actually become properly engraved in my memory. So I was presented with the opportunity to attend a camp in Canada 
when I got the email about the camp from NCBI, I was very like, oh God, I can't go to Canada. I can't go to Canada on my own. That's just crazy. Who, who sets off to Canada on their own when they're blind? And then I really started thinking about it. And I said, maybe I could actually manage this if I used my cane. It was great. I was out there for two weeks. I had um, an absolutely fabulous time. I would recommend anyone to look into it and go there. It was amazing. I think I would advise my younger self to be patient. Even the from going to not using a cane to using a cane. There was such a period of my life where everyone was saying, I should be using it, I should be using it. It takes time, everything does. Um, and you will get there in the end. So yeah, my advice would be, be patient.